Welcome to Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. In the next half hour, you'll obtain insights and tools to transform your life using the biblical principles found in the 12-step program. We believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience because we all have struggles in life. Struggles with addictions, food, depression, anxiety, and relationships to name a few. You'll be encouraged to see how others have found a new way of life with hope for the future through life recovery. Your host is Steve Arterburn, founder of New Life Ministries and Women of Faith, author of over 100 books, and teaching pastor at Northview Church in Carmel, Indiana, one of the 20 largest churches in America. Steve is the co-editor of the Life Recovery Bible, the number one selling recovery Bible. With over 3 million copies sold, this is the Bible given to inmates by Prison Fellowship and the Pew Bible for the Salvation Army. Now here's Steve. Hi there, Steve Arterburn here, and welcome to Life Recovery Today. I am so excited about Life Recovery. I was just at Life Church in Cookville, Tennessee, speaking there. They have 23 Life Recovery groups. And if you'd like to have just one at your church, why don't you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. Now, in 1999, Waterbrook Press called me guy named Dan Rich, and he asked me to read a manuscript by Fred Stoker on sexual addiction and pornography and all of that. Well, I'd written a book about that. I wasn't really interested, but when I read the manuscript, unexpectedly, I was stirred by a message that would impact the Christian world for decades to come. When I talked with Fred about it, he said, Steve, I have a vision that there'll be six different books and they will sell millions of copies around the world. And I kind of smiled inside and thought, every unpublished author has that same vision. Well, here's the revised version. And as it says on the cover, um, over four million in the series have sold all over the world, so many languages. Well, what's so great about it, it didn't shame the reader. Instead, it lays out a practical, easy to understand path to victory over a common plague that's been infecting the character of Christian men for years. The book, Every Man's Battle, became a phenomenon the first year it was in print, and it continues to impact not only the lives of men, but marriages. Now, New Life Ministries, we've been doing an intensive workshop for years, and we've helped over 13,000 men over this past 20 years find sexual integrity. Well, today's show, We're going to be featuring some of Every Man's Battle counselors who have a story of recovery and have helped men find freedom and recovery for their lives also. So, in our first segment, we're going to be sharing about understanding and loving a person dealing with sexual addiction and how it impacts the person and how to deal with the challenges in the relationship. Then we're going to hear from Sam Frazier, Dr. Sam Frazier, marriage and family therapist, certified sexual addiction therapist, and part of our counselor network. Now, Sam also leads our alumni group, Brothers in the Battle, at every one of our Every Man's Battle workshop. Even if sexual addiction is not part of your story or of someone that you know, I believe that you're going to benefit from all these recovery principles that are going to be shared today. I mean, all of us have some area of our life that has excess. Now, when it comes to Every Man's Battle, well, the excess is something that literally destroys the soul. One of the terrible growing problems in our current culture with internet spreading all sorts of stuff everywhere is that more and more women are becoming aware that they have a problem with pornography. And uh, if you watched our 100th episode, or I think it was 101st episode, you know that we had a very nice, normal looking woman, married children, but you had a sexual addiction problem. So I think a woman will benefit from this. I think a man, and if not for you, someone you care about, someone you love, a friend or one of your children are going to come to you one day and say, I have a problem. I don't know what to do. And what you tell them is what I tell everybody that talks to me about this. You really need to call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The standard that you're going to hear about is the standard out of Scripture that says to not let there be even a hint of sexual immorality in your life. And I hope we're going to equip you to do that right now.
Hi, Steve Artiburn here, and I want to talk to you about understanding and loving a person with sexual addiction. You know, one of the things that I heard people say when I started working with sex addicts, and by the way, uh, back in 1988, when New Life opened its first treatment center, it was a partnership with the Crystal Cathedral. It was called the New Hope Center. We did a track over in the psychiatric hospital for sex addicts. 1988. We've been doing this a long time. One of the first things that I heard said to a spouse of a sex addict was, it's not about you. Now, I knew the message that the, they were trying to convey, but I just hated to hear that because it is about you. Here, here's why it's about you. It's because you're married to the person, and it's so personal when somebody betrays you sexually. It's such an affront to everything that you are. It's so all-encompassing in the destruction of the marriage that it is about you. It's all about you because you're the one that's being hurt. You're the one that's going to have to recover from this horrible betrayal. But what they're trying to say is you're not the reason that it happened. It, it, you're not the cause. Um, one of the things that's so fascinating as we've worked with men in every man's battle is to see how many of the men have absolutely uh, beautiful, attractive wives. And you can compare yourself to somebody else and say, oh, if I had been more attractive or more beautiful, it, it would have been different. But it wouldn't have been different. The addiction has a life of its own, and it is separate and distinct and apart from you. Now, so... It is about you in that it's hurt you, but you didn't cause it. But let me tell you what else is about you. It's about you that you deserve this person getting better or not being in your life. If they have been unfaithful to you, I hate to see you walk away and not give it a chance because a lot of people that have been in, involved in sexual addiction really do go from being a monster to being an amazing uh, spouse because they see the error of their ways, they recover, they develop the character that they never thought they would have. But you need to be sure that the person is in recovery and getting the help that they need. And there's no better help to start than with every man's battle workshop. At 1-800-NEW-LIFE, you can find out about that. That's really my main message. Demand that they get help from us at every man's battle at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, I'm Sam Frazier, and I'm with the New Life Counselors. I've been with the New Life Counseling for over 20 years. I want to talk today about the roots of sexual addiction, and actually the roots of all addiction for that matter. When you look at it clinically, the roots of addiction is about an intimacy disorder. What do I mean by intimacy disorder? I mean, when you look at it biblically, where, what is, how, does it, how does it relate? It actually goes back to Genesis 3 at the fall where when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, three things happened to them. They hid because they were afraid, because they were naked. And basically that's what an addict is. He's afraid of who he is because of what he's done, and he has to be away from everybody. It's a, the root of all that is shame. So when you look at the, the four core beliefs of an addict, they very much line up with the three things that happened at the fall with Adam and Eve. Number one, the core belief of an addict is that they, are inherently, they inherently know there's something wrong with them. And similar to the, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil, we know there's something inherently wrong with us. So what do we do? We hide. An addict, because they don't feel good about themselves, they won't let anybody get close to them because of who they are and what they're ashamed of. So when you talk about uh, hiding, what an addict does is realize because there's something wrong, they won't let anybody get close. So they move away from everybody, everybody so they won't let anybody get close to them. There is no intimacy with an addict. The second thing that, uh, the fourth thing that happens with a sex addict is because uh, there's something wrong with me, I'm afraid of who I am, I'm vulnerable, I don't like who I am, and because of that I hide. What happens with an addict is that, they've, you know, God has designed us for relationships. Since I don't feel good about a relationship with anyone, I will keep myself away from people. But because God has made us for connection, what I will do instead is connect with a substance or a process, process addiction or a substance addiction, a chem chemical addiction. And with that process, the addict is really stuck with himself, by himself or herself, and there's nothing that we can do. 
So it takes a, a God to really take a, a, a step forward and really help us deal with those root issues because it's, addiction is actually a symptom of a deeper rooted issue, the intimacy wound, the intimacy disorder. So if this relates to you and you have, feel like there's something you need some help with, please call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thank you. Are you going through your struggles alone? Do you want someone to talk to to help you through your pain? Do you feel like a failure when you relapse again, telling yourself, next time will be different? Don't walk this path alone anymore. Join a life recovery group today and be a person that your friends and family can be proud of. God created us to be in community and we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country and if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. Life recovery brings recovery to you right where you are. You'll take a journey with others to find healing and freedom. Whether you're looking to join a group or start one, New Life Ministries is here for you. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit liferecoverytoday.net. It's hard to find a trusted friend when you're in crisis. Someone who's been there and understands, but who also has the training and skill to give you practical help. Family, friends, and churches want to help, but often they're not equipped to care for those dealing with problems like addiction and pornography, infidelity, anger, depression. New Life Ministries is here to provide help and hope in life's hardest places. We're not focused on making people feel better. We're focused on helping people do the work that will help them be better. At New Life, we have resources available to help you, like books, DVDs, CDs, workshops, and our network of licensed counselors. If you need help, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and begin your new life today. Welcome back. You know, we live in a sex-saturated culture where sex and sexuality is used to sell everything from hamburgers to cars. Now, if you're a man in recovery towards sexual integrity, it's a daily battle that can be won, but you need tools. In the next segment, we'll hear from Bob Sklar, marriage and family therapist and longtime therapist at our Every Man's Battle workshop. This could be the beginning of some new insight that you've never had in a very, very tough area of life. Hi, I'm Bob Sklar and I'm a New Life Network Counselor. One of the things that I've had the privilege to do over the last nine years is to be a part of Every Man's Battle. And part of working with Every Man's Battle is I have uh, aftercare groups called Sustained Victory. And part of uh, doing the, the groups is maintaining relationship and enriching our recovery. Uh, and one of my best groups has really taught me a lot of things about how to be connected and making recovery really a lot of fun. So one of the things I wanted to share with you is about uh, the cell phone being a recovery tool. Now for a lot of us, this is a dangerous item. It's a weapon of the enemy and it really it can really hurt people's life. In fact, uh, today more people are probably looking at porn on their phones than any other way. So um, there's a couple things that I'm gonna end my talk with as far as making this safer. But on, on the topic of making this a recovery tool, uh, one of the things that I want to say is, is that uh, this is about connecting, connecting, connecting. And we know that addiction is really more about isolation and hiding than connecting. Sobri sobriety is not the goal. Intimacy is the goal. And so using the cell phone as a way to connect is a great thing to do. So uh, one of the things that uh, I do with the guys is just doing daily uh, check-in calls. And a check-in call should have things like a feelings check-in. It might be uh, what are the challenges of your sobriety that day, what uh, shame messages are being had, or maybe it might be, uh, can you give me some words of life? So those should be parts of that. And as well as the person receiving that phone call, 
uh, should start listening with the, the ear of a detective, being able to do a CSI on the things in my life. They might be able to point out triggers that, or blind spots that I'm not uh, seeing. Another thing that my guys do that make check-in calls really fun is they play games with this. And one of the things that they do is they play a game called 2 plus 1. So 2 plus 1 is where you call somebody that's in, in your group and then you add somebody in. So then you're in a, a, a three-way call. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, another one of the th guys does batting order. And so he sets up an order of guys calling and you call the next guy down on the batting list. Uh, the, another one that they do is, what am I doing now? Which is taking a picture and sending it on. Um, so uh, again, I want to just encourage you guys to get covenant eyes or change the settings on this to make it safer and use the phone as a recovery tool. Part of working the weekends is I get the privilege of working with a lot of different guys. And one of the things we teach them on the weekend is about triggers. And three of the triggers that I, I find when they're present, that it's almost inevitable that people are going to act out, are isolation, resource, and unaccounted for time. And I call those three things the, the devil's triangle of acting out. So whenever I uh, intervene on one of those different triggers, it really changes my success rate in maintaining my sobriety and growing in my recovery. So for instance, isolation, that would be being disconnected from myself, from God, or other people. Um, people not knowing who I am and where I am. So that kind of isolation uh, is definitely going to uh, promote uh, the danger of acting out. The second one is resource. So resource could be magazines, it could be uh, television, it could be computers, um, any kind of media, uh, even my own body at times could be a resource. So in managing that, I can manage one part of my triggers. And the last one is unaccounted for time. So unaccounted for time would be time that people don't know where I am and what I'm doing. Uh, one of the ways that I find that's really a helpful thing to intervene on that is making frequent phone calls, uh, keeping a journal for my wife, uh, and, and texting my friends in recovery. So I find that managing those three things really helped me. So if you're still having trouble uh, maintaining sobriety or having slips, I'd really suggest looking at those three triggers. And above all, Connect, connect, connect. New Life is here to help you, and if you need that help, feel free to call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Welcome back, and hopefully you're beginning to see that our lives can be restored and recovered. Sometimes the shame that causes the addiction or occurs in the addiction can prevent us from seeking recovery. Well, that's a shame. In the next segment, we're gonna hear from Derek Morgan. He's a marriage, family therapist, certified sexual addiction therapist, as well as a group facilitator at our workshops. By the way, all these people have these certifications, but the big certification is that they're all Christians. Now, Derek's going to talk about the impact of shame and how to detour the shame so that our children can be helped even though they've been exposed to pornography. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're not looking at what your kids are looking at, and if you're not aware that you could have all of the filters up, but when they go over to Johnny or Julie's house, Johnny and Julie, they may not have those filters. And your child could end up even in the dark web exposed to horrific, horrific things. But he's going to talk about that. And he's going to help us whenever our kids do get in trouble. But I'll tell you this, there's nothing more powerful for a child to see than a person living with sexual integrity and purity. That's the goal. Here's Derek to help us with it. Hi, my name is Derek Morgan. I'm a counselor with the New Life Network and want to speak with you today about deterring shame before it starts. How do you create a conversation with your children about pornography? So here's the unfortunate fact. Your kids are going to see porn. Uh, the average age of exposure as of right now is around 11 years old. That means average. So that means some kids are being exposed to this at age eight or nine. Um, if your kid is vulnerable enough to come and have a conversation with you about this, 
you're going to get one shot to do it right. If there's in any way a shaming response that they pick up on, whether that's audibly from your words or even just misinterpreting your anxiety around the conversation, the chances are not very high that they're going to come back to you again in the future about this conversation. So it really is important as parents that we are prepared with how we're going to respond, uh, that we've thought through this ahead of time. I work with men mostly who wrestle with shame and pornography addiction. So I'm really familiar with the ways in which uh, my clients will tell me stories about how their, their parents talk to them about sex and porn and the unfortunate, oftentimes unintentional shame message that they received. Uh, I believe that the, the root of pornography addiction is shame. The acting out is actually the fruit of the tree, not the other way around. Uh, for, for anyone who is stuck in the addictive cycle of pornography addiction, the, the question they're constantly asking themselves is, why can't I stop? And the deeper shame core message is usually something along the lines of, I'm broken, I'm bad, I'm dirty, uh, something's wrong with me. So these messages are often learned at a very early age and unfortunately are really hard to uproot and reverse. So it's very important that at the beginning of these conversations that we are intentional about speaking directly to our kids against any kind of shame message. We can't control the fact that our kids are going to see porn. What we can control is creating a non-shaming environment in our household that invites open-ended conversation. Here's a few ways, a few practical ways that you can do that. Remember that your child is not culpable in the situation. Your child did not create pornography. They probably did not intend to see the image uh, or images or videos. Um, and if they have returned and seen, gone back of their own volition to watch this because it elicited desire and attraction in them, then pornography did its job, right? Communicate grace and affirm curiosity. I had a therapist tell me one time that when his sons came to him um, telling, saying that they had seen pornography, his response was, I'm so glad that you came to talk to me about this, and I'm so sorry that you had to see that. Can you imagine, just imagine what that would have been like for you if that was the message that your parent had communicated when you first talked to them about sex. Kids will have a sense that there's something bad or dirty about what they've seen, uh, and because of developmentally appropriate egocentric mindset, they're gonna internalize that. Right, they're gonna believe I'm bad, I'm dirty. So I, I really encourage you to speak directly to this, right? Um, ask them questions. How did this make you feel? How did you feel about yourself when you saw this video? Uh, and name it, name any potential shame message that you believe may have been uh, come up as a result of, of them seeing these images. Many kids probably won't approach you directly about this. So I, have, I encourage you to have, if you, if you do discover your child watching pornography, to um, use messaging something along the lines of, I'm so sorry it wasn't safe enough for you to come and talk to me about this. I do wanna have a safe home where you can always come and talk to me about this. I'm really sorry you were exposed to that and so forth and so on. Invite a vulnerable conversation don't lecture and be mindful of the unintentional messages that you may be sending around parental controls. When it comes to parental controls, it is important for you to have appropriate boundaries. Make sure that you invite a conversation with your student, with your child about those boundaries as well. Remember, New Life is here to help. Give us a call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Life recovery isn't just about making the courageous choice to give up an addiction or dependency. It's a journey towards health, wholeness, and becoming your very best you. If you need resources to help you in your journey, we can help. There are many life recovery resources that you can do on your own, with a group, or with your church. We have Bibles, workbooks, and devotionals that you can use to work your recovery right where you are. 
That's the beauty of life recovery. To learn more or to get the Life Recovery Bible or any other life recovery resource, visit liferecoverytoday.net or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Unfortunately, sexual addiction is a problem and it's not going to go away. Now, hopefully you've heard something today that's going to encourage you to seek help if this is your battle. Now, maybe you want to join us for an Every Man's Battle workshop. Well, guess what? Not a lot of people want to join us for that. But they go, kicking, screaming, reluctantly. Their motivation sometimes is just to get somebody off their back. We don't care what brings you there. We don't care why you're there. Once you're there, it's our job to help you see how life can be. It's a no-shame zone, and men of all ages have received help for sexual in- integrity problems, and they made a decision, well, I'm just got to, I've got to go. And they do, and they're so surprised at what happens just by being there. Now, if you're in relationship with somebody, and they need help in this area, make a bold move and ask them to attend. Or call us, and we will help you invite them in a way, well, maybe it's that offer they can't refuse. And it could make all the difference in the world, in your world, and in theirs. So, when you're thinking about going forward and living a life of integrity, probably the best tool is another person, if you're a man, another man, if you're a woman, another woman, right beside you. Now, this Every Man's Battle book, this is the revised edition, It is a tool for sexual integrity. And just the fact that it gives you something to do rather than feel bad about yourself, such as bouncing your eyes, looking away, things like that, that we can all do. All we have to do is be committed to it. You know, I tell people all the time that call me, they say, I'm motivated to change, you know. Well, a lot of times that motivation isn't very lasting or long. And what we need is a plan and we need commitment to the plan. Here's a plan. You know, the Life Recovery Bible is such a great tool for recovery. Uh, This is one in a box, but it shows you that this is, uh, you don't even know it's a Life Recovery Bible. It looks like any other kind of Bible. But the thing that's so powerful is you get this workbook on sexual integrity, and you work the steps specifically, specifically to address sexual integrity issues. And it is a powerful, powerful way to change your life. Well, I want to thank you for watching today. If you need help, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We've been helping a lot of men for a long time, and we're going to continue to see the victory in the battle that I think every man who's in trouble wants. All you have to do is have some brilliant humility and call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thanks for joining us for Life Recovery Today with Stephen Arterburn. We hope this program has helped you integrate God's truth and wisdom into your recovery journey. This program is brought to you by New Life Ministries, and it's your support that keeps this program on the air. When you contact us for any reason, be sure to let us know that you watch on NRB. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to liferecoverytoday.net. Please join us again next week for more Life Recovery Today.